everyone, it's your girl Cherry here, and today we will talk about 11 frugal living tips that actually work because I use all of these tips in my frugal living lifestyle. So without further ado, let's get started. So number one is hunt for cheap rent. A lot of personal finance gurus focus on very small aspects of your financial situation, such as lattes. And I find that super ridiculous. Like how expensive can lattes be? And even cumulatively speaking, it is not nearly as large as your living expense. And I'm talking about solely rent. For most people, the biggest chunk of their expense goes to living, goes to rent. So it is so important to consider what are some ways that we can decrease this. For some people, it might be living with their parents and there is no shame in that because if you can save money, and use those money towards investments, this will pay you in dividends, no pun intended, but dividends in the long run that can put you in a much better financial situation compared to your peers. And another way is just alternative living, which is merely finding alternatives to your traditional living situations. A lot of people, they choose to live in very fancy apartment complex, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you can't really save a lot of money if you spend a lot of money on rent. So I've personally tried alternative living myself. I have tried living in a car. I've tried living in a renovated garage. I've tried them all. So I will link a playlist for you so you can watch my journey and what was my experience living in these alternative living situations. And let's get to number two. So the second largest portion of most Americans spending, it goes towards food and entertainment. Payment. This is seriously such a big chunk of money. So on top of thinking, is it possible to cook more and eat at home and meal prep, which are some things that a lot of the personal finance gurus already talk about. Let's also think about what are some ways to get free food. And yes, you heard me right, is get free food. Because let's think outside of the box. What is better than cheap food? It is free food. And so start thinking, is it possible for you to find a job that provides free meals? As a matter of fact, I know a lot of tech firms, they provide free meal as employee benefits to their employees so that they can get employees to stay at the company. So start thinking, are there any jobs that I can take that actually pay for my meals or at least give you a discounted meal. And number three is always budget. I can't even believe how many people don't budget because budgeting is really the first step to just clearing your mind space into really seeing exactly what is your financial situation. And I know budgeting can seem really boring and it is a lot of calculation and Excel spreadsheet building. It's not that satisfying in and of itself. I know because I've done it myself and so I want to make it absolutely easy and with as little friction as there can be. So I am sharing my own personal budgeting template in the info box. This is the exact template that I use for my monthly expense recaps. I've also been doing monthly expense recaps ever since March of this year, and I've been tracking my actual monthly expense since January of this year. So I just want to make my own financial journey very transparent, and I want to use this to motivate you to also take control of your own financial situation. With budgeting, you not only know exactly what you're spending your money on, you also realize how much you have to save for your emergency fund. What I like to do is take three months of living expenses and divide them by three to get the average. And this is the per month emergency fund that you need. And as the risk averse person that I am, I like to have more than six months of emergency fund saved up. But of course, that is just my personal opinion and you can adjust this according to your own needs. And about my budgeting template, I also like to do it in terms of credit cards because I use different credit cards for different reasons. For example, for my American Express Rose Gold card, I use it specifically for dining out because it does give me four times of membership rewards whenever I dine out. So this is how I organize my own budget template, my expense recap. I categorize each line item by credit cards and because I use credit cards for very specific purposes, 
I also put the category beside it so I know exactly which category I spent those money and then at the end of each month I only need to spend 20 minutes going through all my credit cards to understand where did I spend more money on? Where can I cut back on? And how I should spend my money in the future. This saves me so much time and headache. It is so efficient and so accurate. And this also fits with my own personal lifestyle because I do make the majority of my purchases through credit cards if they are available. And speaking of credit cards, let's talk about number four, which is credit card churning. This is something that I wish I have discovered way earlier because it is super rewarding. Even multimillionaires like Graham Stephan do credit card churning, which is the act of using different credit cards to get their points and also signing up for different credit cards to get their sign on bonuses, which can vary from a couple thousand dollars of dollar value points or actual cash of a couple hundred dollars, which can vary from credit card points that are valued at a couple hundred to actual cash bag. The most recent card that I sign up for for their cash bag is the American Express World MasterCard and I already got my $200 cash bag from that. And number five is bank account churning. So in my opinion, if you're still skeptical about credit card churning, you should definitely check out bank account churning because to me, this brings you almost no risk. They don't even pull up your social security information. They don't even pull up your credit score because they don't need your credit score to open a bank account. Bank accounts can easily give you $300 every time you open up a new bank account. Again, to make this process super simple and friction free for you, I am sharing my own personal bank account and credit card churning master list in my info box so you can just download your copy of my master list to see everything in a glance from which bank this is to what are the cash reward bonuses to a link where you can apply for the specific credit card and bank account. And number six is miles for travel. This is something that I've personally done for my solo trip to Panama and I've actually spent zero dollars out of pocket for my flight and my hotel because I use Life Miles. And Life Miles is a platform where you can transfer your credit card points to Life Miles so you can purchase flights and hotels and sometimes you can even buy things with Life Miles. And even when you convert those miles to dollar value, it is still significantly cheaper than buying those tickets in cash. So my round trip business class tickets to Panama was only 600 USD when I did the dollar value conversion. So this is definitely something that you should consider, especially if you love traveling and you'd love to travel more with more comfort and less money. And tip number seven is unsubscribe to all those shopping sites. I know how tempting it is to see like a 40% off at Uniqlo or 50% off at H&M or Zara. How tempting it is to click into it because you think you're saving money. But think about it this way. What is better than saving 50% or 40% or however many percent that they are promoting? What is better than that is that if you're saving 100% by not even visiting those websites. Think about it this way. For the many times that you actually want to buy something, that you actually need something, don't you already go to the specific store or the specific website to buy these things? Do you really need a reminder in your inbox to tell you what you need to buy? Oftentimes we get those promotions, those advertisements in our inboxes and we click into them because it might be a good deal, but then we end up buying way more than we planned for, way more than we need. And so what is the point of subscribing to all these shopping sites if all we're gonna do is just spend more money than we plan for and go against our frugal living lifestyle? So do yourself a favor, remove yourself from all those shopping site subscriptions and give yourself a peace of mind. And number eight is unsubscribe from all those fashion bloggers and YouTubers that all they do is just tell you to buy, buy, and buy. They use misleading titles like every woman should have this pair of shoes or every girl should have these fashion items or must haves in your wardrobe. Like all these misleading titles make you think that you actually need to buy these things. And honestly, you don't. 
Buying these things will not make you more or less of a woman. You are who you are, and you're not defined by what things you buy. And although I understand why these YouTubers and fashion bloggers use clickbaity titles like this to get your attention and to get you to buy from their affiliate links so that they can get money, I do not agree with what they're doing. And this is also why I've unsubscribed and also clicked off that bell for a lot of the fashion bloggers that I used to follow. Yes, I used to be one of them. I used to talk about shopping a lot. I used to talk about handbags a lot, but I came from a different perspective. I don't talk about handbags as just blindly buying and following every trend. Even back in my handbag buying days, I talk about value retention and how you can get the most out of your purchase, how you can get your money back from selling your handbags. And even back then, I talk about buying handbags with a business mindset. Think about the profit margin and thinking about value retention and brand value and considering the fact that buying handbags can also make you money. So tip number nine is buy quality, not quantity. So when I was younger, I always had the scarcity mindset. I always thought to myself, if I can use 10 bucks to buy nine items, why would I use those 10 bucks to buy one item? Because I get less quantity, right? But then as I grow older, I realize how those 10 bucks don't stretch me very far when I spread them too thin. As in, if I buy those nine items from the dollar store, they usually break on me really, really soon because they are poor quality and they just break and I have to replace them. So in the long run, I actually end up losing money because I had the scarcity mindset because I was focusing more on quantity and not quality. So as I grow older and wiser, I tend to focus more on quality. So I realized from my monthly expense recaps that I was actually saving more money because I was focusing more on quality, on things that last me a long time, on things that are durable, instead of focusing on things that can break on me very easily. There is also an excellent subreddit called Buy It For Life, which is a subreddit that focuses on items that you can just buy once in your lifetime and never have to replace because they're such good quality that you do not have to worry about them breaking on you. And a lot of these items also have a lifetime warranty so you can rest assured and know that these items, even if they break, the company will replace these items for you. And number 10 is cut back from meaningless social activities. So when I was still in high school, I attended a lot of meaningless social activities because I thought I had to surround myself with friends to look cool, I had to go to parties, I had to go to drinking events. And oftentimes, during those meaningless social activities, I also become more inclined to buy a drink or get a plate of food in front of me just because it made me feel less socially awkward. So it's like cost of going out plus cost of getting drinks and food because I felt socially awkward. As I grow older, I realize it's really unnecessary for me to attend those meaningless social activities because oftentimes people just brag about themselves, how great their lives are, or people complain about their miserable lives and like kind of rant about their love life and you don't know what to do and you're kind of stuck in the situation and there's no escape route or else you'll be hella rude. So the less rude thing is just to say no to them in the first place so you don't end up having a bad time and wasting money. And number 11 is find a cheap hobby. And better yet, find a hobby that makes you money. I think Tech Lead, which is another YouTuber, he does a really good job of this, is that he monetizes every aspect of his life. He even monetizes his depression, as he puts it, and he also monetized his own divorce. And these are, these are pretty messed up as I say it, but I, I swear he said himself. Of course, I don't want you to be miserable, but just think about this. How great would it be for you to be able to make money off of your hobbies? And a really good way to do this is through YouTube. A lot of people make so much money on YouTube doing exactly what they love. There is a boy making, I think, $8 million from 
uh, reviewing toys. And there are so many YouTubers who are living their best lives because they are monetizing their hobby. And even with my handbag purchases, even with that hobby, I was also monetizing it by doing review, unboxing videos on YouTube so I can get some ad revenue, and I was also buying and selling, selling bags on the side. So I also had a pretty handsome profit margin from selling bags. So this is just something to consider. There are so many ways to make money out of your hobby. Some people have the hobbies of credit card and bank account churning, which is the act of opening different credit cards and bank accounts for their bonuses, such as points bonuses and cash bonuses. So this is definitely something that can not only allow you to live frugally, but even earn some money on the side. And as you stayed thus far in the video, I would like to share a bonus tip, and it is purge your living space. I like to focus on one specific cabinet for each of my purge, because if I focus on my entire apartment, usually I get overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that I have, and I tend to just give up and leave my place super messy. By focusing on just one cabinet, I usually just empty out everything in the cabinet, and I start looking through things, some Sometimes I hold them up and ask myself, does this give me joy? And I also sometimes find a lot of duplicates because oftentimes we get so overwhelmed and busy in our lives that sometimes we just buy things and forget about it and think that we don't have this item and buy it again and again. So by purging your living space, not only will you realize how much stuff you really have and how you should really stop consuming so many things or how you should stop buying so many things, but you will also find items that you don't use and can sell or find duplicate items that you can sell. So this is a really good way to not only clean your living space and have more space in general, but also earn some extra cash and also stop your shopping urges. So it's like killing three birds with one stone. Do you have any frugal living tips that work for you that I haven't mentioned in this video? I am pretty sure you have. So if you do, please share with the community and comment it down below. I read and respond to every single comment. I upload three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 3.30 p.m. PST, and I will see you in my next personal finance video.